Hi, good morning everybody. I'm Gabe, resident of the city of Oxnard. Um, it's Friday, uh, April 24th. Um, I'm on a very quick break from work. I uh, hope everybody's staying well, um, staying sheltered and uh, being mindful of their own health and the health of others. I wanted to do a quick update for something that I um, found out about uh, last night when the city council agenda um, for May 5th meeting was released and it's an update on the investigation into the city treasurer and I'm doing a quick live video about this number one because I'm on a really quick break um, I'll probably do a little bit more uh, comprehensive video about it um, a little bit later but I just wanted to give this update um, because it was a video I'd done previously um, uh, back in February when it came to light that the city treasurer was in, under investigation. So um, real quickly as a very brief recap uh, for folks who don't remember or didn't see the previous video, which I will link to, the city treasurer was under investigation for a number of um, allegations that were made against him by city employees. It's important to know that the city treasurer has two functions within the city of Oxnard. Number one, is his elected functions. As an elected official, he has uh, statutory duties or duties that are assigned to him by state law. And these are things that he has to do as a city treasurer. The other side of the work that he does as a, as a city treasurer are duties that are assigned to him by the city manager. Those are administrative duty, duties. So he has statutory duties, duties that the state of California says he has to do. And then he has this second set of duties called um, ad, or administrative duties that the city manager gives him. So I hope you see the distinction between those two things. Um, in August of 2019, several city employees had filed complaints against uh, the city treasurer, um, claiming harassment and bullying by him over email and by other means. And um, they also complained that he was doing things that were outside of the scope of his work. Based on what I could see in the staff report, none of that detail or that level of detail is not there. You know, what are the things he was doing that were outside of his scope or what was the type of harassment or bullying was he doing? It only says over email or other means. But, um, you know, we'll see what we can figure out about that. Uh, because of these complaints uh, and um, because of the uh, level of um, oversight the city treasurer has, the city retained an outside law firm to do the investigation and they asked Mr. M Molina, who's the city treasurer, to please, um, you know, know this is what was alleged. Here is what we're going to do. You're going to be investigated. They asked him to cooperate and not interfere with the investigation. According to the staff report, shortly after that, the city treasurer contacted city employees and talked to them about the investigation he was under, including one of the people who was making a complaint against him. And these were part of the instructions that he was asked not to do. And so um, I'm gonna read exactly what the staff report says um, for this particular quote, because I think it's important. It said, these actions were violations of the instruction given to Mr. Molina in an effort to compromise the integrity of the employee complaint and investigation process and an attempt by Mr. Molina to intimidate the complainant and potential witnesses to be interviewed. So he contacted several employees, including a complainant, and it sounds like the inference is that he didn't contact them just to complain about the fact he was being investigated. He contacted these specific people, uh, apparently because they were witnesses or they were the complainant themselves. And um, I guess if he was trying to compromise the investigation, he was probably trying to get in their ear about what was going on or what he thought they should say or what, you know, changed the way they thought about the situation. That's my inference on that. So um, as a result of that, though, him violating what was asked of him at, through the investigation process, Mr. Molina now had new complaints that had to be investigated on top of the original complaints. So the independent investigation went through and interviewed 41 city employees of multiple ranks from about eight different city departments and the investigator reviewed multiple documents. The investigation um, produced a confidential report which went to the city manager's office and in it, according to the staff report, the city treasurer, Mr. Molina, was um, 
it found against him in seven of the nine matters that were brought up in the complaints. So because of that, the city, the city manager elected to have or to remove the city treasurer's administrative side of his duties. I see a number of people have joined. So remember, the city treasurer has two sides to his job. One is a statutory side of his job. It's given to him by state law. The other side of his job is administrative, given to him by the city manager. The city manager, after reviewing the investigation, said, I'm going to remove the administrative duties from the city manager. There is a statement that is bolded in the staff report. If you go through and look at it, it's on a page 157, I think, starting on page 156, 157. And there's a single bold statement, and it says, had this been any other manager at any level, he or she would have been fired. And so um, I think because Mr. Molina is an elected official, he can't be completely removed from the city for whatever his conduct was. However, um, his administrative duties that were assigned to him by the city manager have been removed. So, be and the next statement is because he is an elected official, the city manager does not have the authority to remove Mr. Molina completely from his elected office, but he does have the authority to remove the administrative duties that the city manager assigns to him. So as it stands now, the um, assistant city treasurer is now doing what the city treasurer's previous administrative role was. And as a result of that, it's coming to city council now because they have to modify city code uh, to reflect who can make decisions and sign checks where it previously was a city treasurer. They now need to be able to assign it to that person. And um, one part that wasn't clear to me through the staff report, which I'm going to look into, is in regards to the um, city treasurer's pay. So the city treasurer makes about $140,000 right now. Um, however, only about 15% of his job is encompassed by his statutory part of his job, the part of his job that's assigned by state law through his elected office. The rest of his job is all the administrative stuff that's now been taken away. According to the staff report, they're going to modify it so the $140,000 job is now a $20,000 job uh, a year, annual pay. And so compensation will now be $20,000 a year for that level of work that the city treasurer would be doing. But what was not clear to me, it kept saying that that would not take effect until after the November 2020 election. So I'm a little unclear as to... Does that mean the city treasurer now is not doing 85% of his job anymore, but it's still his, he is still going to be receiving $140,000 annual salary? Or does that start now that he's only doing 15% of his job, so he's receiving 15% of his pay? Um, it wasn't clear. I read it several different ways, and um, just I'm just going to ask about it. So anyways, I hope this doesn't sound like gossip, because I don't want it to. It's a very serious issue that has um, that came up. And um, I'm sure it's going to be something that's going to come out shortly. And I hope people are um, paying attention to what's going on because there's so much going on in the world right now that our um, local city matters, such as our budget, but also the management level like this, are things that can be easily missed. And I'm not calling out the city treasurer. I've spoken with Mr. Molina um, individually a number of times. And... Um, Individually, he is a very nice person to talk with. He has a lot of great ideas. Um, I have heard that he can be difficult to work with or he can be very um, assertive and sometimes abrasive. But you know what? I don't work with him professionally. Uh, but it is important as an elected official that he's also aware that his conduct can be interpreted by people in different ways. Even as a manager from his former administrative duties, it's incumbent on you as a, at the manager level to know how your tone and your behavior, how that affects your subordinates or those you work with, at your, your peers, your job alike folks. So anyways, I just wanted to give that quick update about the city treasurer's investigation. And um, that will be coming up at the May 5th city council meeting. And it's uh, pretty big because it's something that has been... Um, I've been hearing complaints about the city manager for a number of years now, and uh, it's just um, really unfortunate that I had to come to uh, an investigation like this um, for 
some kind of action to happen or for behavior to change on the city manager's part. So anyhow, um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I got to go back to work. I have just like two minutes left in my break. And um, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you all stay well. And it's going to be warm this weekend. Please be sure to be in the shade or in a cool place. Please resist the urge to go and congregate in wide open spaces um, or somewhere where it might be cooler. Uh, but also, if you know folks who don't have um, air conditioning or you know don't have people, many people staying with them, give them a call. Just check in, make sure they're good. Um, it's going to be a warm weekend, so stay safe, stay well. Talk to you all soon. Thank you very much.